Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology and Arizona Mills Mall. Now this video isn't so much about Arizona Mills Mall, it's more about malls and the current retail landscape in general. I wanted to just kind of take some time in this video and go over some things that I think are common misconceptions about what's going on with malls and retail. I get a lot of comments on my videos that say things like, oh all malls are dying or Amazon killed the mall, things like that. and I don't necessarily think those are true and I think they're just very common misconceptions about what's actually going on with malls. For example, this was filmed on May 2nd, 2021. It was a Sunday afternoon and this mall is very busy. It's not anywhere near a dead mall nor is there any signs of it dying. And believe it or not, there are other busy malls even in the Phoenix area where I've covered a lot of dead malls in the past. So no, they are not all dying. Hey, that's a Gashapon machine. Those are kind of neat. We'll have to take a look at that later on in the video. But my point is, not all malls are dying. There are actually very busy malls. In the Phoenix area, the biggest problem seems to be that they just built too many malls too close together. And so we're seeing a big market correction with a lot of the older ones closing. The other thing I hear quite frequently is that malls are dying because of Amazon. Well, I'm not quite sure how that is possible. According to the 2020 census, e-commerce accounted for 14% of total retail sales. And it was even lower in previous years. I think that's a little bit skewed higher because of the pandemic and so many people shopping online. And when you think about it, that's total e-commerce sales. So Amazon would be a fraction of that 14%. And it turns out right now it's about a little under 50%. So Amazon's accounting for 7% of total retail sales that leaves a lot of room for other brick and mortar retailers, so I don't think Amazon is the main problem there either. And when you really dig into it, you'll find that the whole dead mall phenomenon started back in the 90s. A good example of this is deadmalls.com. I believe that website started sometime in the late 90s, documenting the whole dead mall phenomenon. So if malls started dying in the 90s, obviously Amazon wasn't the cause of it because they didn't exist until 1994 and they were mainly a book selling website for many years. There isn't really one cause of malls dying or even retail faltering in general. It's a whole laundry list of issues from overbuilding to really poor business decisions by some retailers such as Sears for example. Also just you know land developer greed, corporate greed, vulture capitalists wrecking companies for profit, the, the list goes on. Another important part of the puzzle, I think, is the fact that we have a shrinking middle class. According to the Pew Research Center, the growth in income in recent decades has tilted to upper income households. And at the same time, the U.S. middle class, which was once the clear majority of Americans, is shrinking. The share of American adults who live in middle income households has decreased from 61% in 1971 to 51% in 2019. And I have noticed this anecdotally as well as far as malls go. It seems like a majority of the malls that are still doing well tend to be kind of higher end or luxury malls. There are still ones like Arizona Mills, however, that still do okay. Malls and a lot of the anger stores that existed in them like Sears and Macy's depend on having a healthy and robust middle class. And even though there are a lot of malls that are dying, that doesn't mean that brick and mortar retail is going away at all. As a matter of fact, there's more brick and mortar retail space being built all the time. However, I saw a story today from CNN that said that almost 50% of new retail space that's planned for construction this year is going to be dollar stores. So Dollar General, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, and that same article also said that one third of those stores are going to be Dollar General stores. And I think everybody who's watched this channel for a while knows how I feel about Dollar General. So I guess in the end, my point of that whole rant is that no, not all malls are doomed, although a lot of them are going to be if we don't kind of do things to get the middle class growing again. And also, it's not Amazon that's killing them. It's a whole long list of things. I think sometimes it's just easier to blame a bad guy. And don't get me wrong, Amazon sucks. I'm not a fan of Amazon at all. I just think more than killing brick and mortar retail, Amazon's just damaging the economy as a whole with their monopolistic practices and the way that they treat their employees and that's probably a whole subject for a different video that I may do one day. But 
let's get back to that Gashapon machine and do something fun now, because that was not a lot of fun, the first part of this video. So this is a Gashapon machine, and if you're not familiar with what these are, these are like, you know the little capsule machines that you would see at the grocery store when you were a kid? These are those, but from Japan, and there's much cooler things in them. There's some Kirby stuff right there. That made me pretty excited. It looks like this setup is from Bandai, and I've never seen one of these in an American mall before. And There's even a little uh, token machine here on the side, so they don't actually use quarters, they use tokens, and you get one token for a dollar, so... I'm gonna get five here because I'm gonna need at least three for what I want to get. And what I'm gonna get is something out of this Kirby machine, because I freaking love Kirby. So yeah, you just put the coins in and turn the knob and you get your little uh, little prize there. So let's take a closer look at what I got out of this machine. Alright, so let's see what I got out of the Gashapon machine. Now I waited till I got home to open this because I kind of wanted to get out of Arizona Mills Mall as quick as I could. It was much busier than Mark and I thought it would be and we weren't even there really to film the mall. Originally we were there to film something else for another video that we're working on. But we were just caught off guard by how busy it was, so we decided to film a little bit of footage. Now this is funny, I spent a bunch of time trying to tear the bag open, and then once I get it torn open, I find out that I could have just slid the thing out of the bottom. And that's adorable. It's like a little steampunk Waddle Dee from uh, Kirby's Dreamland. I, I love it. <laughs> this is going to go on my shelf along with some other things that I have on my video game shelves. And it looks like there was a little piece of plastic in here as well. I, I wasn't sure what this was when I was opening it, but once I put him on the shelf, I figured out that I think it's supposed to go underneath one of his feet to kind of hold him up a little bit. So he kind of stands more in the uh, intended pose there. But this is cool. I love Kirby's Dream Land, and this will be great with my little uh, Game Boy section on my shelves. Also inside the capsule is this uh, little warning sheet, you know, choking hazard for kids over three. And I, I always kind of wonder, is this just the United States thing or are those in the Gashapon capsules in Japan as well? I also ended up with a couple of extra tokens. So these are kind of neat to have. I, I do collect arcade tokens from, you know, various arcades and things that I've been to. So these will go into the collection and I keep them inside this little Sega Saturn controller coin purse that I actually got out of a Gashapon machine at the Game On Expo one year. Now this little Gashapon prize will hold Gashapon tokens as well. Since I have these out, let's take a closer look at some of them. This one's from Stardust Pin Bar, which is a really awesome David Bowie themed pinball arcade and bar. This place is fantastic, it's in Phoenix, Arizona. And this one's from the Electric Bat Arcade in the Yucca Tap Room, which is a fantastic live music venue and bar. And this is one of my favorites. These are from, uh, I've got a few of these from the Disneyland Starcade, which is not open anymore. And this is from Makutu's Island, which used to be a Club Disney play place. I should do a video on this sometime. And of course I've gotta have a Chuck E. Cheese one as well. This one's like rock and roll themed. It's back from when they still were doing their stage show. That's going to wrap it up for this video though. I'm going to go find a spot for this little guy in the shelf. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for uh, watching my little rant video on things that I you know, think are misconceptions about retail and malls in general. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and also follow there at the social media links because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.